According to an after-divorce cooperation study conducted in Denmark, the top reasons for the breakdown of marriages included lack of love, lack of intimacy, communication problems, lack of sympathy, insufficient respect or trust, and growing apart. The causation of divorce in the Danish community is very interesting. According to the 2023 World Happiness Report, Denmark ranked number two on the list as one of the happiest countries in the world. They have obtained a higher level of success when compared to many other countries. While the number of divorces has been declining since 2014, Denmark still recorded more than 12,000 dissolved marriages in 2022. Why would more than 24,000 citizens struggle with divorce in their inner circles? Life partnerships, like marriage, usually have two major components. The transactional component looks for benefits in a partner, like money, power, and social status. The relational component, on the other hand, deals with connections, like love, intimacy, and emotional support. While both are important, community social engineering has often minimized the value of emotional connection in the pursuit of transactional benefits. This system of thought is deeply rooted in our unconscious definition of coupling. Throughout human history, marriage has been the primary social institution in society. In ancient civilizations, pair bonds were formed for the purpose of physical survival and procreation. As society advanced, the concept of creating and maintaining stable homesteads grew, and the need to hunt and gather was replaced with farming and breeding. Couples spent most of their time together with common goals in unity, ensuring the success of their breed and harvest. Continued progress throughout the years has led to more structured communities. As manual labor was delegated, colonists were able to increase trade with a broader variety of regions. In more ways than one, the divide and conquer mentality highlighted individualism. The split of responsibilities sent the men out to work with other men, leaving the women to oversee their homesteads. This separation shifted internal influence from oneness between spouses to a heavy external influence with the development of gender-based brotherhood and sisterhood bonds. By this time, societal rules were developed by community leaders defining roles based on gender. Social engineering techniques were used to influence particular attitudes and patterns of social behaviors, like the brotherhood's suppression of emotions with the notion that real men don't cry, or teaching the sisterhood to focus their time on toxic femininity, ignoring their soul and spirit needs to critically think. As family wealth increased, social classes began to rise between the haves and have-nots. At this time, most marriages were transactional in nature and had little to do with love or the quality of companionship. These loveless marriages were often arranged between the two male heads of the patriarchal family structure. The bride was expected to bow to her father's wishes, regardless of the suitor's age, hostility, or her feelings on being sold to the highest bidder on an auction block. In some historical cases, as with Anne Boleyn in the House of Tudor, rumor has it that when the first daughter Mary was offered by her father as a mistress to the king, this move didn't produce the desired power results on the family's behalf. So, her sister Anne was offered in her place. Using wit and the art of seduction, Anne secured the title of queen, and both sisters produced babies by the same king before one of them was beheaded and the family demoted to exile. From the 18th century through today, marriage ideology has slowly evolved, from strategic alliances between families to individuals searching for the fulfillment of personal needs. From these transactional marriages, solely based on money, power, and fame, to relational marriages that also include emotional support, love, intimacy, and friendship. These self-expressive marriages are gaining popularity in our subconscious and conscious worldviews. As a society, we have begun to sit with the reality of how the socially engineered marriage institution was used in the past. As with most awakenings, when fantasy meets reality, there's a wave of resentment and bitterness that moves through society. One that's making the fight against the institution more important than the building of healthy families. And while it's important to access the rearview mirror of the past, we should be extra careful, developing our ability to glance back while still moving forward, progressing in our capability to keep the end goal in mind of intentionally building healthy family units that contribute to a healthier society. In the midst of the marriage divides, there are some things we can agree on. What happens in the inner circles of a marriage affects everyone in the family home and is one of the major influences for what happens in the outer circles of society. Lack in anything becomes everything. The decades of lack in the marriage institution has become everything. Lack of emotional intimacy, lack of friendship, lack of a willingness to change. 
This lack is at the root of failure in marriages that only value the transactional component. And it's bleeding into local, national, and global relationships. As we spend more time seeking inner wealth from external sources, the focus of the marketplace norms shift from creativity, innovation, and community productivity to meeting the social demands of personal individual needs, as seen not only in the selfie fight for the most recognition, but also in the declining contributions to the country's long-term productivity, with the nation's GDP on a slow but steady downward spiral. A decline that each of us plays a role in, starting with our choice to pursue personal well-being that then overflows to our inner circle life partnerships and continues to overflow into our communities. The quality of a marriage institution is not just about the couple. Marriage plays a major role in society as the foundational infrastructure of a home environment that is conducive for internal growth. First, for each individual, and then for the family unit as a whole. All life partnerships are a combination of at least three relationships. Individual one, with an internal hierarchy relationship with oneself, individual two, and the marriage institution itself, combining both individual hierarchies with the goal of unity towards marriage oneness. When the transactions between these individuals of financial security, self-governance, and influence gained by mutual respect are coupled with the relational commitment in the development of the three basic emotional needs of emotional intelligence, emotional attachment, and emotional support, the marriage institution's infrastructure begins to develop for a home environment that is conducive for human growth. It's a self-parenting haven for healthy adults that trickles down to healthy children. According to Harvard University's Margaret Andrews, an instructor of emotional intelligence, EI is a basic, individual, human need. It deals with the ability to know and understand the knowledge of human emotions and personally manage your own. Emotional intelligence includes self-awareness, self-regulation, and social awareness of others. Emotional intelligence can be used in two ways, in an emotionally attached way, promoting all three marriage relationships with individual well-being, as well as strengthening the marriage bond, or it can be used in an emotionally detached way as a weapon of relationship war for manipulation, promoting self-serving individualism over the marriage unit as a whole. A person with transactional behavior will only give if you have something they are interested in taking. An example of this can be seen in a news report of a life coach divorcing her husband because he killed her vibe when he was diagnosed with cancer. She was aware of the physiological changes associated with his emotions and very public about her detachment from them. According to the report, Vibe appeared to be a non-negotiable in this transactional marriage, and when the partner, reckoning with the end of his life, could no longer offer it, the transaction was ended. This is an example of the presence of individual emotional intelligence that is detached from the outcome of the life partner's well-being. Emotional attachment, on the other hand, plays a major role in human connection, especially in inner circle relationships like marriage. Once we have emotional intellect or knowledge of basic and advanced human emotions, each partner has the option to attach to or join in on the emotional experiences of their companion. Emotional attachment moves us from the initial state of the transactional give and take to a partnership committed to going through life together, participating in each other's experiences. When both partners are focused on attachment in all three relationships, deep connections can be formed. Attached couples over time feel more comfortable relying on each other and develop a safe space for a deeper level of oneness. Studies have shown that emotionally attached marriages create bonds that can sustain the relationship through highs and lows, increasing the likelihood of happy, long-lasting partnerships that provide a sense of emotional safety, protection, and reliability. Finally, emotional support is the third element of basic relational needs. The word support means to hold up, to bear all, or to bear part of the weight of something. Oftentimes, the measure of transactional and relational connections can only be seen during hardship. Our representatives are usually on their best behavior during the dating and honeymoon phase. It takes time for the real self with the unconscious shadows to fully show up. Mentally strong and healthy adults, for the most part, will hold themselves up with reliance on their inner circles limited to normal social connections. But if hardship arises from any area of the internal hierarchy, body, soul, or spirit, actual support may be needed. Mild emotional support may appear in the form of a listening ear after a rough day at work or offering insight into a complex decision. 
But in extreme cases, to the level of dependency, 50-50 transactional relationships may require a periodic transition to a 100-0 ratio, like the husband making the final transition from this life. In this worst-case scenario, as every system in the body shuts down, physiology may take over, rendering the psychological capacity of the mind, willpower, and emotions depleted, with nothing left to offer in return. This is when the strength of our internal hierarchy, combined with the strength of our moral systems of thought, are put to the test. Principles that deal with our beliefs on what is right or wrong will play a major role in how we navigate with what we know to deciding whether we will join in and how we will emotionally support our chosen life partner. Marriages that are mostly transactional in nature often fail because of lack in the relational component. According to a UCLA psychology professor, Matthew Lieberman, a growing body of research shows that the need to emotionally connect is as basic as our need for food, water, and shelter. As we commit to becoming lifetime students of emotional intelligence, emotional attachment, and emotional support, we can learn to develop stronger inner circle connections, needing less emotional validation from the external public. And one step at a time, a balanced me becomes a stronger community of we. Subscribe to explore the commonalities of our humanity with us. One topic at a time from the inside out. Welcome to Circles of You.